All right. Hey y'all. Um, how are y'all doing? How's break? How's life? So, catch you up. <laughs> okay, let's let's move to questions. Um so I have a couple topics. I have three. And if y'all want to talk about something else, we can figure that out. Um, but the first topic I was going to talk about were was high school parties. Have y'all been to a high school party? or heard of high school parties, or talked about, like, have y'all planned any? How? No? I heard of one, but then uh, after that party, everyone at that school got COVID, and, they, and then they shut down the district, so that wasn't the best. Okay. Um, well, I, okay, let's, okay. Have you guys like heard of like things that may or may not happen at parties, uh, like drama, alcohol, drugs, nothing? Yeah, kind of. I do have an older sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So she's told me a few things. Okay, well, as older sister, um, I am a senior, so I've had my due diligence with high school parties. Um, I mean, since you guys haven't really like experienced any, do you guys have any questions or like, like any ideas or like, comments about any high school parties? Go ahead, Fair. So I think really like the dramatized movies about like <laughs> like everything going on is it actually like that or a little bit or not at all do you mean in terms of what like in terms of like relationships or like like what do you mean everything um i think it really depends on who's throwing the party and what the party is like for um there's definitely like you're definitely going to be exposed if that makes sense like you're going to be around alcohol and people and maybe drugs um it is like like depending on who's there it gets really intense or like live i guess you can say but as long as you kind of understand like your space, you should be good. But yes, it is kind of like hard, like the movies. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Comments, concerns, ideas? Anyone throwing a party? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I do have a question. When you guys do decide to go to a high school party, what do you think are some limits that you'll have? Like, yeah, what's some limits that you'll have? Don't get drunk. <laughs> what, bro? And just don't get drunk <laughs> or don't drink at all. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, same as him. I don't like, I like being in control of my body. I don't like uh, doing anything like that, like drugs or alcohol. That's understandable. Can and don't get yeah. anybody pregnant. What? Bro. <laughs> bro. Okay. Bro. Okay. Bro. okay. <laughs> Cameron, Farah. 
I mean, I doubt that I'll find myself at a party because that's just like, I doubt that I'll ever find out about one until after it happens. <laughs> um, but like, I don't know. I don't really like the smell of alcohol. So I don't, I don't, I'd even show up. <laughs> Absolutely no drugs of any sort or kind. You know, people be lacing stuff. I'm not trying to die. Um, any type of alcohol would pop. I would have to get it myself. Like, because, you know, tamper with it. I mean, not that I would, but I'm just saying, hypothetically, um, no drug at all. That makes sense. Pro tip for everyone, if you do get a drink from someone and the ice isn't floating, then there's drugs in the cup. So don't drink that alcohol. Okay. All right. Next, <laughs> next conversation. Everyone ready to move on? Okay. The next conversation I have is LGBTQ in high school. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Like, how do you, I know like the topic is kind of a touchy topic for some people. Um, so how do you guys feel about it? How, what are your all's thoughts around it? Do what you want with your body. I just don't think like, I don't think you should be having any surgery until you're 18, until like you can actually think the fully full process out. But other than that, like do what you want, be you. So you're talking about like trend, like trans positioning people? Yeah, like I, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying wait until you're 18 so you can think the process fully through. And like, if you really want to do it and you have like, and you've thought about it, then yeah, go for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, makes sense. Legally, I don't think you can get transitioning surgery until you're 18, so. But are you asking just like how we feel about like LGBTQ in general? Yeah, or like, um, like, ex like, I know that in my school, a lot of people um, came out pretty early on. And so we have a like really large crowd of people who are um, in the, L like, who identify with the LGBTQ community. Um, and because we're the generation that kind of came with everybody coming out, um, I, I think a lot of people have more questions or like opinions about it. Um, and I think that our generation is kind of like 50-50, like you, you're you okay with it or you're not okay with it. I just want to hear like you guys, like what you guys think about it. Yeah, um, personally, I do support the LGBTQ community. Um, and my school also does have like a pretty good amount of um, people in that community. And <coughs> the school population. Um, I mean, like a lot of my friends, like my close friends are in the LGBTQ community. And I mean, they have like, we do, we have a uh, spectrum club at our school that like does, uh, like they have like a assembly where they they did like a big presentation where people did like personal narratives about their experience being a part of the community at school and their experience being part of the community like in general like in their lives and stuff how that's affected them and we've also done different assemblies like with like professionals who've come in at my school and have talked about like gender and sexuality and how that comes into play at uh, an all girls school and like, cause my school's an all girls school, but uh, yeah. But like, I don't know, I've been pretty well versed in like knowledge about it, but I don't really know everything, but I do tend to talk to my friends who are part of the community about their personal experiences because they've come to me and they've talked about how like those speakers though they 
have said a lot and have said a lot of stuff that I didn't know. They felt like they didn't really touch on their personal experiences being in the community. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's, that's all. Like I support it and like if there are things that I don't know or that I don't understand, I do tend to talk to my friends about it. And my friends, yeah, they tell me about their experiences and they say like how the, their experiences aren't like the experiences of the entire community, but it does, it is nice to see other perspectives. Here, Rachel. Um, my mindset on it is not not to sound like that, but I don't care. Like it's your choice to do whatever you want. Like whatever what somebody else is doing isn't harming you. So like let people do what they want. And um, I'm not against it at all. Um, I know a lot of people, well, there was a lot more at my middle school. Um, a lot of people were um, out, especially in middle school, at least at mine. Um, and at my school now we have a couple transgender people and we also have gender neutral bathrooms on some of the floors too. So, yeah. Bradshaw? I don't got nothing. Well, um, to go back to what Farrah was saying, my school has a lot of gender neutral bathrooms as well. My school is also kind of like really, I guess you can call it liberal. So like we're not liberal, inclusive. So um, like my school has like certain rules and things that traditional high schools don't have, like instead of a prom king and king or like a homecoming court, we just kind of don't have that because of people who like identify as they, them pronouns or people who don't necessarily want to be called a king or queen um and I know that that raised like a lot of conversation in my school what do you guys think about that um my school doesn't have homecoming but um being an all-girls school we had we've had similar conversations like we have um, a position in our like student government that is like the student face of the school and recently within the student government we had like like multiple week-long conversations like about like if being an all-girls school the student face of the school needs to be someone who identifies as a woman um so we've had to had we we have had conversations about like those labels because that we do have a lot of things around the school, like the rules within the school and like our mission statement <coughs> originally said that it was like for uplifting women and girls, but there are uh, students at my school that um, don't identify as a girl. So we were trying to like navigate how that works as an all girls school. So I understand like, like the, with the homecoming, like not having king and queen, I don't understand getting rid of it entirely. I feel like it'd be very easy to just change it to like homecoming royalty or something and then just elect two people regardless of their gender. I don't know, I feel like that would be easier than just getting rid of all of it. Um, my school doesn't have homecoming either. Um, obviously the seniors have prom, but we don't have like those titles or nothing. But um, I don't know if Maryland schools do this too, but in DC we have like these tests on paper 
it's not really a task, but it's like identifying yourself. And we just had one in school a couple months ago, and it was like asking your age, your weight, your height, and then it went into like your sexuality and your pronouns, and then also about if you take drugs or you drink stuff. Like I think it was like trying to figure out if your home life is okay. Cause they kept asking like, do your parents drink and drive or stuff like that. But I've, we've gotten those tests throughout the years. Not all the questions, not the, the questions weren't always the same at elementary school, but we had those like middle school and stuff. And I've noticed how the questions have expanded to fit everybody. Like instead of just asking the gender being girl, boy, and other, they've like extended it or like sexualities, they've extended like the options and stuff. So that's, I've noticed like DCPS specifically trying to be more inclusive um, for the system wise. I took that I took that test too. And they asked me if I did crack and heroin. And, and all my friends started busting up laughing. But uh honestly, I don't really care about homecoming and stuff. But when it comes to people's titles, when they tell me what they want to be called, then I'll call them that. And if like one of my friends cause them the wrong thing, then I'll correct my friend. Cause you know, I'm just trying to be respectful, but yeah. Yeah, at my school, they also sent like a Google Forms out asking questions like that about your sexuality. I don't know about the, like, do you do crack and stuff, but they definitely asked about your sexuality. They were trying to like know who the school is. We haven't done anything with the homecoming king and queen. And I don't think any school in our county has. Like, I don't, I don't know if they, they mind so much because I, I don't know. They just haven't. Yeah, um, to the survey, I, I had to take it too. I think it's a DC thing. Um, but we, they, they asked some pretty interesting questions. Um, but I think that the survey was also, um, what is the word, anonymous. So I don't think that they kind of like, I don't think that they like knew your name or like knew your home life. I think it was just kind of like, um, I don't know, trying to get like research or something. Um, because they did ask some very weird questions like about crack and your like sex life and all of that so it was pretty interesting um, hey, uh, they was asking people if they was carrying guns at school oh well, somebody yeah. admit to carrying a gun at school my school took a similar quiz they were looking for like the demographics of the school basically yeah. and they like asked questions like so much that they didn't ask any about guns but they did ask questions about like your sexuality and gender and like they're asking questions about like if you'd ever taken drugs or drinking alcohol or send nudes or something like that and it was like a bunch of really random questions and they started asking about your parents level of income and their highest level of education and a bunch of other stuff like that I don't really know what the point of asking some of the questions were but I know that the school was looking for demographics that they, they said they could better serve the community. Yeah. Do you think that they actually do help serve the community? Like where you are right now, at like in high school, do you think that they help? This is for like all of you all. I mean, I feel like in some ways they could help because I feel like sometimes the school like with thing, like with certain things that we don't really talk about, they like greatly underestimate like the frequency of them. I mean, like they asked a lot of questions about mental health, which is not, I mean, at my school, we do talk about it frequently, but I know like in general, like that's not something that's commonly talked about. And like with those demographics, I feel like it'd be 
easier to like understand like how how like what percentage of the schools going through this and another thing like they asked questions about <coughs> like um like another thing like my school has a really big Jewish population because we're a uh, um, non-religious, like independent school. So, but we don't like, like we didn't have, until this year, we didn't have any of the Jewish holidays off. And so all of my classes on those days would have like two or three people in them. So I don't know, like, I feel like those demographics help with things like that. Like the things that like the huge populations of the school with things that we don't really talk about. Like, I feel like we could better help the school work for the majority of the students if we understand who the majority is. Pharaoh, Bradshaw, Supreme. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Um, the uh the, the the forms that we take um i feel like they want to feel like that they're doing something um but i don't think it's making the big impact that they wish that they could like uh, a lot of the questions in the survey honestly uh, a lot of them like you could they were asking what grade and race you are and what process of elimination, you could kind of figure out who that is. But I don't feel like it really helped too much, especially like the mental health seminars we would have like the for like assemblies. And they was they would keep expressing that, oh, you can go downstairs to the counselors if you ever need to talk. But my mindset is when will we have that time to leave our class to go do that? Like, cause we have a we have, they, our teachers give us a lot of work and very little time to get anything else done. So I'm like, if you miss a part of class, then you got to make up that end of the next class. So when would you have time to get the help that you keep saying that we have downstairs instead of, like, I feel like they don't give us, they're not, the options aren't large enough for what they want to accomplish. That makes sense. Yeah. To be completely honest, like at my school, I got like maybe one teacher there that I'd tell if I was mm -hmm. feeling any, any type of way. Like those, that's one teacher out of like, like, like a hundred that I talk to one teacher or staff. Cause like, I don't know, I feel like there's a disconnect between students and staff nowadays. Like you don't, there's like, you have one teacher that you're cool with or two teachers and then everyone else is just like there. I don't know. Yeah, I noticed that, like, I noticed that and I noticed I noticed that, yes. And um, I also noticed that our generation is a lot more vocal about mental health. Um, but I also know that a lot of people understand that staff in the school are mandated reporters. So it's harder to communicate with a staff member um, because I think that we get scared that, you know, someone's gonna say something or that we're not gonna be listened to or that like, it like, it's just gonna go through one ear and come out the other. Like, it's not really gonna be communicated in a good way. Um, and I know, you know, not to call out my school or anything, but I know for my school, we have like a really crappy discipline. So like, in turn, like, I don't know if you guys are on social media a whole lot over quarantine, but for DC schools, a lot of sexual assault survivors were, you know, telling their stories in like the DC schools area um, to the point where DCPS and DCPCS were trying to take down accounts because it was making them look bad. Um, and I know for my school, we had an account of like stories and like, you know, people being called out. Um, and the people who made those accounts were punished, not for, you know, saying something that was 
overly sexualized or overly like overly dramatic but more so because my school wanted to kind of save their reputation and I noticed that happens a lot in a lot of schools where and so when like for me when I'm looking at if I'm going to tell an adult something or not it's more so are they going to help me or are they going to save their reputation if, does that make sense what do y'all think about that? Yeah. The teacher that I talk to in my school, like the one that I'm close with, that I, all the kids are close with, we know that like if we tell her something, it's going to stay between us. And she's also like, she's not like a criminal, but she's like willing to go against the rules. So it's, she's pretty cool, right? So, I mean, I, you need to find someone like that in the school, I think. But I won't tell anyone else probably anything ever. I don't trust them enough. I mean, uh, for me, I wouldn't really talk to a teacher because, like, most of my teachers, I just I don't really like them. Like, we have, like, these groups, like, we have these, like, advisors that are assigned to us that we're supposed to be, like, here are your teachers, like, form a bond with them, like, you can go to them for anything, like, here you go. But I actually, like, I don't like my advisors. They're probably, like, my least favorite people in the entire school building. Um, but like even the teachers that I am close to, it feels like they don't care. Like I feel like talking to them, I just feel like burdening them with my problems because like it's not much they can really do to help me with them anyways. Like unless they pertain to their class. And even then, like the only teacher that I really like in the school is like the course director. And like I don't have any issues in his class. So he can't really help me with my chem lab. So it's not really like my problems like well really like renting to him is not going to do anything for me really Bradshaw fair I don't really talk to anybody about anything to be honest I just keep it to myself so the last person I would honestly trust is the teacher because I know they're going to go talk to somebody else about it. Um, I don't have anything to really say to the teachers. Um, I know a lot of our like kids in the school are most comfortable with their department teachers. Like, um, like I know a lot of my friends talk to our dance teachers a lot. Well, just one specific one, the one that's the nicest to us. But um, I don't, I feel like that's not going to help solve any of my problems. They're not going to do Like if I say I'm having trouble balancing this and this, they're not gonna do anything to help me with that. So I feel like it's no use for me to tell anybody that and yeah, like if I were to tell anybody, it would probably be friends from different schools, not the ones from my own. I don't know. Like you would think that they get it more because we're in like the same predicament, but it's just better to have an outside ear, in my opinion, for like a different perspective. Yeah. Um, I think that right now I'm kind of having like a dang moment. Like I was, you know, a lot of things don't really change in four years, but like, it kind of seems like this is just a repeating process. Like it kind of seems like um, schools like will hear us, but they won't listen to us. So. I don't know. Y'all need to work on that. Y'all need to do something about that. Come on now. Okay. I think I have one last topic and then we can go into topics that you guys brought if you did bring any. Um, the last one is culture and like how it is being black in high school. 
So for me, my school, I think is, um, we have a high group of Latino and black kids in my school. Um, we don't have a lot of white kids um, or Asian kids in my school. So I think that I kind of, it's a little easier to be complete, like my complete self at school. Um, I think that for me personally, I kind of have some trouble. I've always gone to a school where Latino people are the big group. Um, and so I, I know, like I've grown up with the Latino culture. Um, but I think that, no, I'll save that. I'll save that. But what it, like, how is it for you guys? My school is like 100%, not like 98% black. And there were two white kids in my grade. One of them, like they're both my friends, but one of them left. So there's literally one white kid in our grade now. Uh, and I think there's one Hispanic dude and then one uh, Middle Eastern guy, but everyone else is black. Our, my school is smaller though. My school only has like 500 kids and all. It's a charter school. My school is also small, but it is a PWI. So I'm one of maybe nine black kids in my grade. Um, and like, that's um, like, I don't know, maybe there are like two kids that are Asian. We have one Latino student. I don't know, there's, there's, there's not much, there's not much diversity there. But, um, <laughs> uh, Every year I do see that they like admit more students of other races in to the school. So that's nice. But like, I don't know, sometimes, <coughs> sometimes it's like, I feel like I forget that, like, because my school is like very like liberal, a liberal school. Like sometimes I kind of feel like I forget that not everyone knows like everything like I was sitting in history class the other day and I had to explain to someone what the three-fifths compromise was and that was just kind of like jarring because I was like sitting there like like how did how do you not know this thing that really like affects a part of like how I go through the world and perceive the world I don't know sometimes it feels like like my, my close friends are black. So like I, do, I can like turn to them and like talk and like they understand like what it's like to be in the school and to be black. And, but sometimes like I'll talk to other people in my classes and like the fact that they're just so like astonished by injustice against black people. And it's like, yep, that. That is, that is what happens. Like we did a presentation the other day and people were like, <coughs> and like, so like we did a presentation about like, I, w I did a presentation with one of my friends in history about the colonization of Liberia. And like, I was trying to like, I had to like explain so much of the passages to her. She was like, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. And I was like, how does this not make sense? This is so like clear to me. Like, I don't know. Some, it's just things like that. Like sometimes I'll feel like it doesn't like, sometimes I won't really notice like that. Like I'm the only like black kid in this class, but then sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow, I'm really the only black kid in this class, you know? Um, uh, it doesn't really, I don't know. I'm cool with everybody. Everybody's cool with me. Every single race. Like, if you're cool, you're cool, to be honest. 
and I think that's how people see me too. So I don't think people just see me as a black kid, especially since there's a lot of black kids in my school too. And yeah. My school is majority black kids, like 95%, uh, like 80. And we have a good amount of Hispanic or Latinos or whatever in the school. Um, there's a couple white people. It's not too many, but it you you can see them. You can you can most definitely see them. And then now that I think about it, I don't think we have any Asians in our school, like at all. Not not in my grade. I, I don't know, but we may have a large population of black children, but you know, all black kids are, we don't all have the same personalities. So we may have a lot of us, but you know, you can still feel quote unquote alone because you know, some act like this, some act like that. Like there's a different, like any, all the types of versions of personality that you can think of, we have it. And like, there's always like the click of, that group, that group, that group, but you know, that group is black. They're all black, Most majority of them are black, but like everybody has like their own personality in the way they are. So I don't think it being black like makes it a certain type of way, like that stereotypical black child that you would think in all black school is not that way because there's a whole bunch of different personalities there. Um, I know we have one non-Black person in our dance department, uh, but the other departments are way more diverse. But yeah, I mean, all my friends are Black in the school. I have one Hispanic friend, but everybody else is Black. Nothing against the other races. It's just, that's just how it is for me. So, um, it seems like we all have a little, oh, go, go ahead, Cameron. Oh, um, I don't know. I just wanted to say like, like also being black and like a PWI, it seems like, like everyone's kind of waiting for me to fail, it seems. Like, teachers and like uh I feel like like my teachers are constantly like expecting less of me in classes like they're always like asking me to shoot lower like I don't know I I feel like that might just be my personal experience because I've talked to my uh their friends about it and they like they don't uh have the same experience, but they're also like, I don't know, my one friend is like completely fluent in French and is in, uh, been in like the junior French class, like, for, like years now. Um, and my other friend is taking two grades ahead in math. So I don't know, but I feel like it's probably just my experience then because they proven themselves to be exceptional but I feel like since I'm kind of average the teachers don't expect more of me like they expect from other students no I get that oh go ahead I surround myself like my best friends uh Jaden and Nigel are in like the top like they're literally they got the top two highest scores uh on the PSA or the SAT for our grade and like I don't know I I, not that I like try and compare myself to them, but I try to be like them. Don't tell them I said this, but like, I, I, I truly look up to them. You know what I mean? And then like when, when other people compare me to them, I just shrug it off. I'm like, all right, whatever you say and move on. I'm me, they're them at the end of the day. I want to add on to what you said. Um, in elementary school, I, all of my best friends were high achievers. Um, it was middle, elementary school, but you know, they were always top. Like, I don't know if y'all know what this is, but we play ST math. 
elementary school and they always had that there was always ahead of everybody in that it's a map site um and like the reading we did reading levels through a to z and you know closest to z the higher level was and they always had high levels so you know we always had that healthy competition between each other and i think that was good because i wasn't the best elementary school but because of that competent not okay that competition and always wanted to you know strive to be better when i got to middle school i was way better at everything like i was in not it was and now but like uh, better at math, higher grade in math, better at reading. Like, I feel like that's good to have friends like that to help you keep you on your game. I can't say nothing about my friends now, but you know, just, they're, they're, they're good, I guess. Okay, so when we move back to the topic of being Black in school, this kind of ran my mind and I think that we should probably talk about it. So because my school, we have a couple white kids. Um, it's not a sm like it's not as big as our black and Latino and Hispanic population, but it is a larger group. Um, this school year has been pretty rocky for Black students specifically. Um, we've had a student, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Kyle Rittenhouse situation. Do you guys, are you guys familiar with that? Um, Kyle Rittenhouse was a white kid. He was 17 at the time um, who crossed state lines with a rifle um, to go to a Black Lives Matter protest. Um, and he, injured and shot a couple people. Um, he was recently actually found not guilty, um, which is pretty frustrating to me uh, because what he did was illegal. Um, but that's another situation. That's another topic. Um, anyways, so a student in my grade actually posted something on Instagram um, which kind of threw everyone off, not everyone, not everyone at all. It threw a lot of black students off. Um, in the post, he kind of said that Kyle Rittenhouse was using his rifle that he brought to a Black Lives Matter protest um, as self-defense. He also called him his hero, um, which, made a lot of black students pretty angry. Um, and he, this is also a kid who um, in middle school called a black student the N-word. Um, he's a white student. Um, he says a lot of like really sketchy things that's pretty upsetting. Um, recently, like, maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we had a student whose video got leaked of him calling someone a <laughs> B word, A word, N word, um, a white student. Um, and I noticed that at my school, every time there's something that's racially motivated or something that people are not gonna agree on, um, they tend to defend the white student instead of understanding the black student's mindset, if that makes sense. Like for the student who um, called Kyle Rittenhouse his hero, he was escorted all around school and was escorted home as well. Um, for the student who his video got leaked. He also made a school shooting threat. Um, and he was, <laughs> he was saved. Um, he, they asked him not to come to school for a while. Um, and at first they were saying it was because they wanted to protect us because it's a school shooting threat. Um, but they later 
said that they were scared that it was going to be a race war, as in like black kids jumping um, said student or hurting said student. So they like really like, and we didn't have any assemblies, like we didn't have any conversations about it. It was kind of like, it happened, move on. And I don't think that's fair at all. But I do think that that is my experience as a Black student in high school. Um, I know Bradshaw goes to the same school as me, so he can probably like say his opinion on it. But like, what do you guys think about it? Your school's messed up. I don't oh, know. At the, the high school, like down the road from me, the other one, they one white dude said the N-word to a student. I mean, they didn't escort him home, but like during school, they had to escort him around. But when he when they left the building, they chased him down on bikes to get him. And uh, they had a chat, apparently. I just want to say, bless your school's heart, honestly, because there's no way, there is no way my school that they, no, 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 they, mm, they would have got the security that was escorted, uh, that was walking him around and then got the student too, because there's no way they, they, no, 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 they get mad when just somebody disrespects their friend and it's the same race, not like racially, but just, you know, regular arguments so something like that who that would have been bless your hearts amen yeah no that's that's crazy um they're very bold very bold for being a minority at the school um very bold i mean i my school i don't know my school is a rich school, so their racism is more subtle, you know, that no one would ever outright say the N word, but they might just like subtly imply that they think that slavery was a choice. So, I mean, I don't know, like that's, that's very crazy. Uh, <coughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, that's very crazy. I'm astonished. I was unmuted. I was trying to find a video, but uh, I, I wasn't going to show it, but my friends, like all my black friends, right after he said, because like the entire school saw it, it was a whole Instagram page. It was DCI Shade Room, right? It was a whole Instagram page and he was on it and every single person reposted that jump, man. And, and my friends, they were all trying to jump him and stuff. And then, uh, but he wasn't coming to school. And then one of my friends that goes to a different school, he found him. He found the kid that said it and like was taking pictures of him and stuff, showing people where he's at. But, and I heard he got the cops called it to his house too after that uh, threat. Yeah, he definitely had the cops called. Um, talking about cops the cops left our school pretty early on um after the threat we, my school didn't inform the parents about the threat until we were in school like nine o'clock so a lot of people were leaving that day um but I think like going back to like the video and the um Instagram I think one of the things that was most disappointing for me were the black students who were like kind of sticking up for their white friends because they're friends like um what like one thing for me is I don't really care who you are if you if I feel like something is wrong or if I feel like you did something that is disrespectful I will call you out on it and I noticed like a lot of black students were defending these white students um and like no shade to black men 
but I feel like I majority of the students were black men and I feel like at some point this might get hate but I think that I feel like a lot of black men seek white men validation and I think that a lot of the students who were defending I know a lot of the students who were defending said students at least in my grade in the grade right below me were seeking validation Rachel why are you laughing but yeah I don't know about black men seeking validation, but those people probably were. I don't know. There, there are some of us that definitely do, but I think most of us don't really care. We're just vibing. But like, uh, like I, don't, I don't know. Your school is weird. I don't know how any of that stuff gets away. How you get away with that? Because at my school, somebody made a uh, shooting threat. They got homeland security called on them. They were like, they got arrested. No, they didn't get arrested. They got taken into custody, so they wouldn't do anything. It was bad. Okay, this was a interesting talk, if I do say so myself. Um, do you guys have anything else to add on, to comment? Any questions? Any thoughts? Go ahead, Fair. I want to add on to your um, Black male white validation situation. I'm not saying it's true, but um, my friend who goes to a different, she goes to a DC charter school. Um, I was on Instagram live with her and, you know, some of her school friends got on and, you know, one of them just happened so to be black and male was asking like questions like, um, how would you feel about a non-black person saying the N word? And, you know, obviously we said absolutely no. And, but he was like, I, I don't think it matters that much because it's just a word, you know, stuff like that, you know, it seems to always be with the, that category of people. I'm not, it depends on age. It depends, it depends on age a lot. I'm not saying all, but you know, I am side eyeing you, you 15, 14, 16, yeah, I'm side out of y'all a little bit, you know, but you know, um, it's always room for growth. And I feel like as a community, we should work on that because that's not, that's not cute. It's not okay. But you know, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like, in terms of like the, the inward pass or like, people who are genuinely okay with non-Black people saying the N-word, I have yet to meet a Black woman who is okay with it, but it tends to be Black men who are like genuinely okay with it. And I'm not saying it's all Black men, but I am saying that the pattern that I see is that it is Black men around me who are okay with it and just like you said Farah, it's not okay and it's making our community look a type of way when we are letting people say it like half of people are like yeah go ahead say it it's just a word and the other half are like no like it comes with history um so <clears throat> as a community I think that we need to you know, get that situated. Um, yeah. What do you black men have to say about it? What do you Bradshaw have to say about it? I mean, oh yeah, you got it, Bradshaw. Oh, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. No, nah, no, nah, I insist, bro. Um, Honestly, I'm not even gonna say that because <laughs> yeah, I just gonna talk. But you say um, it, just say no, what you got to no, say. Come no, on. No, no. No, you um, you started it. You might as well finish it. But 
I guess y'all are right, because I got a lot of friends that I don't really care if people say it either. Uh, what? For me, it's not that I'm <laughs> like, you can say it. I just know something about you now, so I'm not going to mess with you. I'm not going to talk to you. And you ask me for anything, I'm just not going to give it to you, because it shows the way you think. But I'm not going to fight anybody over saying the word. That's too much. I got too much to lose. Right, I'm saying. That's exactly right, man. Right, man. You will fight somebody over saying that. If somebody calls me that, that's one thing. But if they just say it, then I just know that they're weird. And I'm not going to be cool with them. If you don't say anything after they say the word, you're giving them an opportunity to call you it. Like you're literally giving them the opportunity to continuously say it. And the word is rooted in history. Like it's not just a word. It's not just another cuss word. Like it, it has history to it. And I think that a lot of people get confused when black people say it compared to when a white person says it. Because when black people say it, we turn the word into a discriminant, a discriminant, Notory word. I don't think that's a word, but I think y'all know what I'm trying to say. We turned the word like from a negative word to something that we just call each other like an uplifting word. And I think a lot of communities do that, which is why we have slurs. And some people can say certain slurs and some people just cannot say certain slurs. I think the N word is one of those slurs that everyone should just not be able to say. And I think that like, you guys are like, oh yeah, well, I'll just stop messing with this person. But if you don't call them out on it, they're going to continue. Like it's, it's one of those things where they need to be told straight up that they can't say it and there needs to be consequences or they're just gonna continue to say it. What do you think the consequences should be? Yeah, what well, well, consequences? You want us to be there? You want to? You want us to do something about that? All right. It's also very telling that the only solution you see to someone calling you the N word is fighting them. Like, why is that? The, why is that the first place y'all go? I never said that. That's why I'm asking what the consequences. Should be. You did I'm though. You fight someone over saying the N word. Like, they're not other solutions. Like, like there's nothing else you can do. Like, unless you fight them, you're just gonna have to walk away and never talk to them again. Like, there are other there are other things you can do. Like, you could talk to them for one thing and like like I don't know I feel like fighting or being completely passive like the, it's not it's not one or the other it's not a thin line it's a spectrum like you there's definitely other ways you could go about that situation and if someone's calling you the n-word you can't just sit there and let them call you the n-word like if someone's calling me the n-word that's then I'm gonna fight them but what's the difference right, between know. someone saying the N word and someone calling yeah. you the N word? It's the same thing. It's the N word. Like it's I don't not. Know. It just seems. It just seems more disrespectful. Yeah. Somebody calling me the N word. But honestly, if somebody just saying it, and you're you're getting like that that mad at it, it and shows they how keep much saying it, somebody else is gonna be more mad at it. So just let's. I would just let somebody else handle it. To be honest, I don't want to. Yeah. That is um, how discrimination. I agree with you. I agree what you said about the spectrum or how to how to deal with that. But we're in 2022. You shouldn't know that you shouldn't be saying that. So my first mind is yeah, physical interference. There's mm -hmm. gonna be some physical. I, I don't I don't mean like jump the person or hurt the person, but you know, you gotta set their mindset straight because they should know by now. Don't like I feel like talking obviously isn't doing nothing because. We tell it. We say this repeatedly all the time. You can't say that. Don't say that. Why are you saying that? And they're still saying it. So obviously they need they need something stronger. Like you know, like during the protesting, a lot of people were saying um, protesting isn't really getting us anywhere. They we need them to hear us. So that's why some started looting. Now most of them was white people looting and making us look bad. But you know some of the mindset was. You know let's make a stir. Now I wasn't against looting if it was black people just trying to make a not looting. Not looting. I'm not okay. You get what I'm trying to say. I hope, but like you gotta make some noise. Let them know it's not okay. Instead of just saying, "Oh, that's not okay." If your parent tells you, "Oh, calmly, oh, don't do that," 
that's not, I mean, that's not really going, that's not going to stop a five-year-old. They still going to do it. Now, when they get yelled at, maybe a slight whooping, then they get the mindset together, you know? I, so that's, that's, that's what I believe. Now, nobody at my school would dare say that because there's too many black people at my school for one white kid to say that or one non-black person to say that. But, you know, to each their own. Yeah, to go back to, go ahead. I, I get what you're saying, Farrah. Like, maybe having a sit down with a racist is not the best way to handle the situation. But throwing hands is not going to do nothing but get you in trouble. Like, I feel like there's definitely still calling up a school or calling up their employer. And guess what? You are currently employing a racist. Now that person doesn't have out of a job, you know? Like, I feel like there are other ways to go about it. Definitely, other than... Like fighting is not the only solution. Talking may not be the best one, but you know, this I get what you're saying. Um, going back to the protest, um, when I think that the protest is actually a really good, like let's let's use that. Um, for many, many years, I feel like black people have talked a lot. Like we educate a lot. We talk a lot and I think that a lot of people including certain black people think that it's our responsibility to educate someone we're in 2022 it like things change we are at least for us we're not in the middle like we're not in the middle eastern or middle western united states like we are always like we're we're knowledgeable we we know if we as black children are knowledgeable them as white children are knowledgeable and again the n-word is one of those words where you just know not to say it and if you do say it you have consequences and i'm not saying you know that fighting isn't our fighting is the best you know consequence or whatever but at some point, you're going to have to learn. And if I'm consistently telling you that it's not, like you can't use the word and you still use the word, then okay. Then I'll get, I, you know, like I'll call a college or I'll call your employer. I'll call, like something will happen. If you continue after that point though, I think that you need a more physical consequence to understand that you cannot use the word. Like if you use the word, then you're gonna get the consequence you deserve. It's just like, like all that over a word though, like that's so much time and energy that I've just put in to this dude that I, I don't care about personally. I don't care, I, I don't care about this dude or anything. And I've just wasted so much time and effort, possibly caught a felony charge, felony assault charge, because I decided to beat him up with a couple of my friends. That's just too much. But it's not just a word. That like I think I think that we're just skipping over that. It's not just a word. It's not just like it's not just like someone calling you a hoe. Like it's a word with meaning. Like it's it, it has meaning and it has history to it. And I think that we just keep skipping over the fact that it has history and but there's like there's not enough history for me to go to jail for it, you know what I mean? Like there's there's too much. That's there's, there's there's a cost benefit whatever analysis, right? And to me, like the benefits, the cost outweigh the benefits for me personally. I mean, I'll talk to them, yeah. If they I, I agree, like calling their employer, that's enough. But like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight anybody over that. Like physically. See look, I got a question for you. So if it's a little white kid, right, like, let's say five, six years old, and they're going around saying the N-word, what are you going to do? First of all, if they're five or six saying the N-word, that means that the N-word is being said in their house. Like, right. that, that, that's a learned, that's learned. That's, like, right. not, as a five or six-year-old, then you have to tell them that that's not okay. That's when you start the education around the word like you can't obviously I'm not going to jump a five-year-old obviously I'm not going to beat up a five-year-old 
and I can't like call a five-year-old employer because duh but like that's where the education starts a five-year-old saying it compared to a 15-year-old saying it is two completely different things though You know, personally, I feel like we live in the information age. Like I can find out anything with a tap of a couple of buttons. Like I have the entire internet in my hands at all times of the day. Like if you are uneducated, it's a choice at this point. Like there's so much information around you all the time. If you're not learning, if you're not gaining, if you're not absorbing any of it, if you don't know in this age, not to say the n-word it's a choice it's like it's you making an active decision to ignore everything that is around you everything that people are trying to con constantly to educate you like like there's there's so much there's so much information like being shot at you every day and you're telling me that you can't absorb this one thing you can't just learn this one this one thing you can't learn how to do that it's a choice I definitely agree with that. I also think that it's a choice to be ignorant. And I think there's a lot of conversation around the word ignorant because people, you know, like to say that it's losing value or whatever. Actively saying the N-word because you want to say the N-word is ignorant. Actively ignoring the history around the N-word is ignorant. And I don't want to be disrespectful to, you know, Bradshaw and Supri, but I think that as Black boys who the N-word's history literally connects to your history and kind of just pushing it to a side, I think that's ignorant. Um... You know, obviously you guys have your opinions and everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. Does anyone have anything else to um, add on to say? Are you guys feeling a little debreather? No, no. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining today's meeting. Um, it was a very interesting conversation. Yeah. Okay. Bye, guys.